We're going to cover how to do a nonlinear regression. And in this case, we'll have some energy prices that we use as an example. We're going to try to predict the price of oil based on the West Texas Intermediate, the Henry Hub spot price, and also the Mott Bellevue propane price. And we'll use data from the years 2000 to 2016. We're going to fit that to a correlation that we've come up with with four unknown parameters, including A, B, C, and D. And there's some data right here that we can use to do that regression. We're going to adjust the values of A, B, C, and D to minimize a sum of squared errors of a normalized difference between the measured <clears throat> and predicted values. And this is formulated here as the objective function, where we have the uh, predicted oil price right here, the measured oil price, and then we're also going to normalize it by the measured oil price. So it's going to be the fractional difference between the predicted and the measured value, and then we'll square that. <clears throat> okay, so uh, we're going to sum up all of these values from I to N, where N is the number of data points that we have, and we're going to minimize A, B, C, and D in order to, uh, well, we're going to minimize this objective function by changing A, B, C, and D. Okay, so there is our, um, there's our problem that we've set up. Now we're going to set this up in Python Gecko. And what we'll need to do, first of all, is just take a look at the data. You can grab that from this link, and that will open up uh, this text file. Uh, it kind of looks like this with comma-separated values with uh, this header. Or and you can also download this and open it up with something like Excel, okay, where each of these have you know, the columns of the data. So we'll show how to import this and then be able to do the regression and then plot the results. We also want uh, the R squared value uh, for the goodness of the fit. So let's go to um, our script and we're going to set this up. I'll just call this energy.py uh, and we'll first of all just import um, you know some values, some packages uh, into okay uh, we're going to import some of these, let me go ahead and put this over to the right. It's uh, typing for me right here. I'm going to go through and just explain it. Okay, so let me put this over onto this side just so we can see this as well. And it's going through a little description there of the problem. But let me just bring up our, okay, our problem statement right there as we go through this. Okay, so the very first thing I'll do is import NumPy as NP. And then we will also import Gecko. Now you can do pip install Gecko. Um, you know, if you just do pip install uh, Gecko from the command line, you'll be able to get that package. Okay, we need pandas. Uh, we looks like we imported NumPy twice. Should probably take that out. Uh, and then matplotlib as plt. So the very first thing we need to do is get the data file. Now the pandas. Uh, it allows us to read not only from static files but also from URLs. So this uh, this file is stored here. Um, it's kind of long, but if you just type it in, you'll be able to get your URL, and then you'll get a new data frame from pandas from the read CSV, and we'll read from that URL instead of reading from a file. Okay, and then the very first thing we'll need to do is just uh, extract those as NumPy arrays from the data frame. There's our West Texas Intermediate oil price. And then our second factor that we're going to be using for the optimization, okay, is going to be the Henry Hub price for the natural gas. And then the third one is going to be the Mont Bellevue propane price. So we're going to use these as kind of the raw the raw values uh, to be able to predict the price of oil. Okay, so we have these three that are the major energy indicators, and then we're going to try to predict the best oil price that uh, is going to be derived uh, based on the these raw energy uh, prices, the spot prices. Okay, so first of all, we're going to create a gecko model, and this is just going to be m equals gecko. We already imported gecko. And then we're going to create an FV. Okay, so an FV is going to be something that is going to be fixed over the horizon of data. So we have um, maybe like an A, B, C, and D. So these are just going to be one value. Okay, we have a lower bound and an upper bound for those. And uh, FV stands for uh, fixed value or feed forward variable. 
uh, depending on the context. Uh, we're going to be running in the parameter estimation mode for AP Monitor or for Gecko, and so we're going to uh, use iMode 2. There's our different factors. We have X1, X2, and X3. I've just renamed those and given them values of XM1, X measured 1, X measured 2, X measured 3. Then we have the one, this is our measured uh, values for the oil price, and then we have Y as our variable. Okay, so we have Y, the thing that we're predicting is going to be this uh, correlation that we have over here on the right, or on the left, okay, right here. And then there's our objective function right below it, okay, m.obj. We need to turn the status on for these FVs to make sure they are calculated. Okay, and so those are uh, going to be status equals 1, and so those will be adjusted by the optimizer. And then we need to set some options. Uh, we have I mode. I mode is going to be equal to 2. That is uh, parameter estimation mode. And then I'm going to change the solver to the APOPT solver. In this case, the IPOPT solver was not able to solve that problem. So I change it over to the APOPT solver. And then we solve it. And then we're going to print out the values. So we're just going to access just the very first value of the thing that's returned. And we're going to do b.value0 and C dot value zero. Now if those were adjustable at every time point, you would have different A, B, C, and D values at every uh, parameter point if those were MVs, okay, instead of FVs. Okay, now we're just going to do some printing of the solution. Okay, there's our formula, and this is going to go onto the plot that we're going to use. Uh, you know, later we're going to put it onto the plot, just the formula. I have a little bit of LaTeX there. If you do the R and then the, um, you know, the dollar sign, that will make some, it'll make it nice. I'll put the superscript, okay? And then we also want to import stats. So we want to get our R squared value. We're going to get our uh, slope, intercept, R value, P value, and, okay, so this is the way we'll get our R squared value. Okay, so we're going to do stats, and we'll do linear regress, and then we just have Y, M, and Y. Okay, and then get our uh, our squared value, and there we have the R squared correlation. Okay, and okay, we'll just print that out, the R squared value. Okay, next we want to plot these results, and we'll put everything onto the same plot, including the A, B, and C values, as well as the correlation, and we'll obviously plot the data. I'm going to plot the, you know, the measured values just with a diagonal line there. This is a parity plot, and then we're going to put the measured and the predicted values on, and those are going to be red circles. And then we're going to give it an X label, and that's our measured outcome. Okay, also the y, the y label, which is our predicted value. Okay, this is just a parity plot. The X and Y labels are just predicted versus measured. And then we'll give it a legend as well. Okay, and then the rest of it is just putting some text onto the plot. So this is just to, uh, you know, put the A, B, and C and D values onto the plot just so we can view them with the plot. And so let me just show you the plot as we're generating this. Okay, so this is the thing that's going to be generated. So you can see we're just putting those at different locations on our plot. Um, the x comma y value, and then I put a string there. And that puts uh, these different values onto the plot so we can see everything in one place. Okay, and then here's our d value that we're putting on there, right there. And then we also want to put on this uh, correlation that we have, okay, this R squared value, okay, so you can see it's a very good fit, 0.996, and then we also have our formula that I put just over here. Okay, we have our grid on, and then we'll show, and then that will be it for our script. So let's go ahead and just run this now. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just run energy.py and just look at this. It should have come up with the right, uh, you know, the same plot. But let's just verify that. I'll show you what happens with, you know, Python 3.6. You can also do 2.7. Oh, I did check module. Let me do F5 instead, run module. And this will work in Spider or any other, um, 
you know, PyCharm. Uh, it'll work in a Jupyter Notebook and other places. Okay, so there is our plot. Uh, you can see uh, the data. It's a very good prediction. And there's additional information if you'd like. Uh, you can download the source for this. If you didn't ca quite catch it all, just come to the ME575, which is our optimization course. And then if you come down to the right, you have uh, number 13, which is this nonlinear regression with oil prices. And there you can see the script. If you want to get this, just click the Get Code, and it'll give it to you in raw format so you don't get any special uh, characters there. There's also the Python SciPy solution. And I do have to mention, uh, all of this is thanks to Fulton uh, for submitting this problem to the AP Monitor discussion forum. So thanks for submitting that, and I look forward to future submissions from others as well.